Welcome to Einstein's universe. To know Einstein's universe is to know space and time. Big and small, wave and particle, you and me, relativity. The first thing to know is what it means to know. The universe is less a machine than a conversation in a foreign language. Space talking to time. Time rubbing elbows with matter, wave and particle, whispering like old lovers. And you can only guess what they're saying. The first thing you need to know is that there is no first thing. Moments in time are like beads on a necklace. Which one comes first? Depends on how you count them. Count them one at a time and watch them slip away or stretch them out like a rubber band if you can. Clocks tick slower when moving. If you go faster, you stay younger, but you also gain weight. It's what I call the rock star paradox, and that's why for the night to last forever, you must go from bar to bar, to place to place, and don't forget the after party where you fall in love with the idea of yourself, the ideal self that you could be if only, and only if. The first thing that you need to know is that your first may not be my first that our reference frames may be different, that we may be traveling at different speeds. Like the girl I dated sophomore year. She was moving faster, and I was definitely not her first. I gave her a bead necklace, and I tried to give her my time, but what she said she really needed was space. Maybe they're the same thing. <laughs> it's all relative, man, except when it's not. The speed of light, for instance, not relative. And in this, it is not like love, which changes with each lover, but like heartbreak, unchanging in every direction. The speed of broken hearts is constant in a vacuum. She sent me spinning back into the cosmos, twisted and deformed, like water spinning in a bucket. I wrapped around myself like a memory, like time itself swirling through space. This is how the universe turns the way each line of a poem turns, revealing one truth, one reality, one story. But the multiverse, according to the theory of the multiverse and some other reality, you got together with the boy or girl who said no. In some other reality, you got together with that boy and that girl. In some other reality, you fell in love fought a war, bought a boat to cruise in the Danube River at sunset with the one who said no. In some other reality, you said yes, yes, a thousand times, yes. But in this life, we ride the ice till it melts to the end of time's arrow. Yes, we know that space and time are the same when the dead feel so close to us. They were only here. Yesterday, oh ghosts, they are real. When we look into space, we are looking into the past, and from a great distance, we could see years into the past, and we could find our dead friends and family. Joking around, leaning on fence posts, and laughing easy. From Alpha Centauri, 4.2 light years away, I could see my father again. And this time I would pay attention. That's just a trick of light. Only in dream time do the dead return to us. And that's why sometimes time feels emptier than space. And space feels so empty that we can still hear the echoes from the beginning of time. 
We listen through Earth's ears. Observatories in Louisiana and Washington and Italy listening to gravity. A distant symphony of exploding stars. At night, I too listen to the stars. I can hear their rhythms. I can hear them calling out their screaming for us all to listen, shouting at lovers and lonely men and dogs that howl from the porch lights of forgotten houses. If you listen, each of us too has a gravity, each of us a curve, and each a line to say. And that's why we wave back at the stars. Hello out there, can anybody hear me? Mother, Father, Jesus, Seti, oh, they can, but it takes a long time. The way it takes years to hear your parents, the way you realize space and time are the same as our sons and fathers, mothers and daughters, the way one bleeds into the other. And if you listen close enough, and long enough. If you stand at night on a field of snow gleaming white in the moonlight as if lit by some energy within, you begin to believe we are all generally related, connected by some cosmic force. Oh, sentimental lies will give you a half-life, half-lived, until bit by bit you disintegrate, you decay. Truth? It's cold, it's orbit chaotic, a pair of particles is less predictable than an old married couple that blocks Thursday nights out for love, and do they even think about the light that breaks through the morning window? Wave or particle, wave goodbye to last night, part with your hair in your old age, dare to eat a peach or wait around to die, not me. I give myself up to the word, the way that word gives up to meaning and the way that meaning gives up to time, and time is really what matters. But matter is mostly space, mostly nothing, a few little bits moving too fast to see. We don't even know what most of the universe is, only 5% they say, so what the hell is the other 95%? I think it's dreams, but what is a dreamer of this mad universe? Fermions and bosons and light and dark matter and love and jealousy and greed and neutrinos and white dwarfs and black hearts and our lives and our graves all spinning around together, spinning around from the beginning of time to the edge of the universe. It's in all this chaos that we either find something or don't, that we embrace the mirrored mystery or lament for simpler times. You know, like Newton and Galileo, simpler times with simpler machines. No car alarms, no iPhones, just a telescope and a butter churn back when knowing stuff meant something. But who can know anything after Heisenberg? <laughs> Einstein once said, God does not play with dice, but maybe he just wasn't invited to the game didn't know the right back rooms. Climb into a box with Schrodinger's cat and you may just find yourself both dead and alive. And don't you feel that way sometimes? Like you're in a box, both dead and alive? Maybe some doors are best left unopened, some boxes sealed up tight. I, for one, don't find comfort in certainty, and that's why a universe that is ultimately unknowable, it suits me just fine. Call it cold space. Call it dark and empty. Call it like you see it. All I see 
is possibility. Thank you.